Here's the photo I'm going to work from. Uh, this is a, a picture I took at the Bog Garden in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's got a nice trail that leads back to the small lake. So I've got a full value, a full set of values here from my pure whites to my really, really dark darks. And there's a shoreline back here that kind of gets lost a little bit. Um, I'll probably go a little lighter with that. And, uh, and this is a little too horizontal here, the ends of the trees. So I'll, I'll change that around to make it more interesting. And there's a couple of geese in here. We'll place those in. But uh, let's get started. I'm working on 100, uh, 140 pound rough arches paper. It's on a block, so I have it taped off. Um, I use professional grade paints, uh, American Journey, uh, Da Vinci, uh, uh, Daniel Smith, Holbein. And uh, as long as they're professional grades, they all are interchangeable. They work well together. I'm going to use a, a number six uh, mop brush. This is by Creative Mark. It's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill. And again, this is the number six. Uh, this is one of my favorite brushes. Uh, it's got a doesn't have a green tip though. I painted this on there on all my brushes so that I can loan them out to students and I can easily retrieve them at the end of a workshop. So this is a great brush. So let's get started here. I'm going to start in the background. I'm going to take some sap green. I always spray my palette before I start. Let the, give the ch uh, paints a chance to soften up before I start painting. So I'm going to take some sap green. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. Might even throw a touch of ochre in there. Just see what that gives us. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to start back here in the, in the background. A lot of times I'll use the brush, I'll lay it on its side. Uh, gives you some nice effects. And the shore kind of curves around this way. I think we'll lay this here until I need to paint down there. Maybe that'll help you here. And I'm going to let the, uh, the background, the sky area, kind of peek through this, this tree line back here. Um, Gonna add just a touch of ultramarine blue in there. A variety of colors, but very subtle changes uh, in color or value. And this kind of curves around this shoreline here. There's a little bit of yellow grass from a from a lawn over here on the left side. And I think just that touch of yellow, a warm, warmer color would be kind of nice here. But you can see everything's nice and soupy. Nice and wet. I use a lot of water, but I use pigment. So, all right, let's establish uh, this shoreline a little bit better here. Okay. So I'm going to take some of these same colors, Ultra, Sap, I'm going to lay in the reflection of these trees in the water here. Now there may be spots where I'll touch the shoreline, let the shoreline and the, sh uh, the reflection kind of disappear together here. But I'll just show the shoreline, the little highlight in a few spots. Just enough so that it uh, comes off as a, uh, as a reflection. We can kind of lose that over there. Okay, I'm just going to rinse my brush out, fan it out, and just kind of play with that edge. Again, I don't want it as dark here as it is in the picture. I want that to be pushed back a little bit, a little less colorful. Now we see some ripples over in this area. So this big brush, you can lay it on its side, you can flatten it out, and you get a nice blade out of this. It's really Really a great brush. So, just just a little bit of water in my brush, or a little bit of paint and water, I should say. Let's just kind of calm this down a little bit.
just want to make a slow transition from the reflection into the water. I'm going to leave this all white in here until I get down near the bottom and I'll add the blue to it. And if I feel like these are just too important, I'll just take some clear water and just kind of wipe them back a little bit just to calm it down. Okay, so let's come into the foreground here with the blue, that sky color that's in the water here. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. I always have a test sheet next to my uh, palette so I can test the color before I go to my painting. I'm gonna, thinking I might add a little of this blue with my ultra. This is Horizon Blue by uh, Holbein. So let's just mix this up and see what we got. Okay, getting pretty close. Just got to add a little more water to lighten the color. Okay, here you can see the ripples here. And here you can't. It just diffuses into the white rick. It just kind of blends in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with clear water and just kind of wet this area right in here. So when I lay this blue in here, it'll go really soft. It won't have any defined shape or anything up in here. It'll just disappear into the, into the white. Now here again, like I said, it's, but it's dry over here, so I can fan this brush out and I can get these ripples in here now. Okay, let's go ahead and go on here. I'm just looking for interesting shapes right here. Maybe just a hint of blue to make that transition up into here. Okay, I've got this dark uh, land area in here. It comes up quite a ways, so I, I need to bring this blue up a little farther in here. I'm just going back over this just to push the value a little bit darker. I don't need to take this blue all the way down to the bottom because I've got all these dark colors in here. So we'll just uh, we'll just go with that right there. Okay, so that's uh, that's a good uh, first layer of paint right here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit this with some. Uh, uh, my hair dryer right now and I'll be right back okay it's pretty much dry right now especially down here it might be a little damp up there uh, a lot of us use hair dryers to dry our uh, painting as we go along uh, it's kind of speed up the painting process and I've done that for years but I've, I've come across this uh, uh, hair dryer it's not a hair dryer it's a heat gun by uh, 
by Ranger. It's called Heat It. It's a craft tool. It only has one speed, but it throws out a lot more heat. So it's not moving your paints around. It's, it's really quick and it's quiet. So I found that this works great for workshops because I can uh, dry my painting as I'm talking to my students. So uh, I really suggest this. Again, it's Range by Ranger. It's called the Heat It Craft Tool. Okay, let's get in here with some, uh, some trees, some foreground. I'm gonna get some dark colors in here. I'm gonna get into uh, some Payne's Gray, some Ultramarine Blue. I'm even gonna put in some uh, Quinacridone Violet. I want this to be very, very dark. So any of these dark colors um, will work well. So I'm using a, uh, a number eight uh, round brush. Uh, this is by Blick. It's called Master Stroke um, and it's a sable brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I'm going to have this tree is going to blend into everything else here, I'm going to make sure that I mix up more than enough paint to cover that whole area. So I'm going to, just going to increase the size of my, my puddle here. Again, you think it's dark enough, but you don't really know until you, uh, until you until it dries. And then it surprises you a lot uh, because it ends up being lighter than, than it looks when it's wet. So... Just going to double check this here, fan it out a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. So this is really, really dark in here. So I'm looking where this, this tree here it starts just below the hat, the center point here, and then it comes across to the left side. So let's just start at the trunk of this tree here. Just kind of create that spot. Decide on the, the size, the thickness of the tree. And I'm going to leave a nice puddle down here at the bottom. That way it's still active. It's not going to dry and give me a, an edge that I don't want. And I'm going to lay my hand on the side like this, or the brush on the side. I'm going to drag this straight up with my hand resting on the paper. That way I can control the, uh, the thickness of the, the tree. Okay, let's just extend this puddle here. Kind of comes over here like this. It's kind of fun, you get into spots like this, you can just kind of create almost anything in here that uh, will look nice. Just interesting shapes. Again, I'm gonna load this up, keep a nice bead right there so I can, uh, that'll stay active like that. Now I'm gonna go to my uh, smaller brush here it's a uh, script brush and uh, it's a number one script brush and uh, a lot of the script brushes are all pretty much the same so you, you don't really need no brand name on it but uh, being a lefty I started the tree and drag out uh, my limbs like this but being a lefty on the right side I find myself doing the opposite I'll come from out here come into the tree it just seems to work better for me. There's a whole bunch of branches in here so we'll just load this up. Another good way to do this is hold the brush on the end and try to uh, try to give up some of the control. Your trees will look more natural. Just kind of let the brush just squiggle around and and give you interesting shapes. There's a, a bush down in this area. Let's just drag some of this up. Again, 
again, I'll lay the brush on the side, the different effects. I'm not trying to make this look like a particular kind of leaves or anything on this bush. Um, I'm going to take a smaller uh, mop brush. This is the number four by, uh, by Harmony Squirrel Quill. I'm going to fan this out so you can see how fanned out the hairs are. I'm just going to kind of dab in here and create an interesting texture. Go back to my script brush. Gonna fill that in a little bit so it's just not so much contrast right there. You don't need to grab uh, grab one of your small round brushes to put this little detail in here. Um, Use these big brushes, your painting will feel less overworked. And it's actually more fun to put it in like that. I think what I want to do is I want to uh, maybe just drag this shoreline a little bit more here, just a light value in here. Barely touch the paper. Rinse it out. Hit that bottom edge. And just kind of create a little more roundness right in that area. So let's go back to uh, foreground area here. Now this I want to be dark enough. I really want to punch this up. So you think you got it dark enough? I tell you just add a little more Payne's gray or a little more violet in so make sure that when it dries you don't go, oh I love it, but it's the values it just doesn't have enough punch to it. So So I'm going to go to my round brush again, place some of these rocks in here along the shore. So I want to just do my impression of what's going on there. <clears throat> I'm not looking to match every one of these rock shapes or the weeds on the bottom. Um, I'm just going to go in here and just have fun with it.
Got any little burnt sienna in here. I see some burnt sienna in the picture. Um, so let's just put some in there. Don't know if this will show up in the video or not, but I took some more burnt sienna and also took a little bit of raw sienna in here just to try to indicate uh, a few of these rocks with just a little bit different value and color. Again, I'm going back to my, uh, my script brush. So I'm not laboring over putting these weeds in here. I'm not going slowing down and trying to get that shape. I'm just giving suggestions of it here. I'm uh, kind of letting the brush uh, kind of take its own path here. It's so easy to put in too much detail, especially a bit in the background. Uh, and it distracts from the, the foreground, uh, the important areas of the painting. Here I'm taking some quinacridone violet, a cool color temperature wise, just for interest, just add another color in there. So there's a little bit of value change in here. It's very subtle, it's not important, other than just being interesting to see some violet and some burnt sienna or raw sienna um, because that gives that impact between the white paper and the darkest darks. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up to the top here. I'm going to go with another brush that I really like. And this is a dagger brush or, or a sword brush. Uh, this is a so it doesn't say the number, it's just a small one. It's by Pro Art, A R T E. It's, uh, well, I still say it. it's got a number, it's a number 9A. It's just a small brush, like a small dagger brush. So I'm going to go back to my dark colors here my Paints, my Ultra, uh, maybe a touch of the violet in there. Get a nice dark color for all these limbs that are coming in from the top. Again, I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm not going to have these tree limbs all stop short sort of at the same spot. The advantage of the dagger brush or the sword brush over the script brush is the script brush doesn't hold much paint so you can't make too many strokes before it uh, you run out of paint this has a little bigger area here so you can make a lot more strokes uh, without having to reload your brush with paint
That's much better doing it this way than taking a small little round brush and laboring over each little stroke. Again, this is, I'm, going, I'm leaving this more open in here instead of straight across where the tree branches and leaves all come down to the, about the same spot. Okay, so now I'm going to go back with my uh, smaller uh, mop brush, number four. And just kind of calm this area by putting a little uh, indication of some leaves in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fan it out so I can get some nice interesting strokes in here. So I'm not touching the paper very hard. I want the hairs of the brush to stay fanned out for quite a while so I can make a lot of strokes in a, without having to reload. Another way to do it is you can get in here and do a little splatter in here too. Always have a paper towel ready though because you might get it in spots you don't want it. Clear water and a paper towel. So just every once in a while, I just kind of squint and look at it and see what, what do I need to do here? Do I need to fill in some more areas? Um, a lot of times I'll sit here and I'll squint at it and look, okay, what? What do I need in here? Don't want to get too carried away. What's nice about this brush again, this mop brush, is I can lay it flat and I can get a blade so I can put in these little tiny indication of leaves. But you can see how, how much of a blade you can get out of this. So I just kind of twist the handle in my hand, depending on the direction I want the leaves to go. I've used other brushes that look just like this, um, but I haven't had any luck finding one that works uh, anywhere near as well as this brush. So uh, I really do suggest this. Um, I've got three or four of the other brands. Um, and you just assume that while they look the same, they're going to react the same. Uh, that's not the case. Okay, I'm looking at this now. <clears throat> and I'm realizing that this tree, I'm put, uh, this tree, my tree is farther out into the water uh, than it is in the picture. So what I can do, if I want to change that, I could just fatten the tree up a little bit and strengthen some of these tree limbs. Um, but the more I look at it, I kind of like that out on that little peninsula like that. So I think I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to come in here and do a little split. You've got more control of splattering it this way than you do uh, the way I was doing it at the top. You can control where it's going to go much easier like this. As you can see, I don't use my finger like this. I you go from the elbow, I keep the brush pretty horizontal to the surface. I keep the uh, finger stationary and just kind of 
go up and down here with it. And I'm close to the paper, as you can see, too. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this, and we'll throw a couple of the geese in there, and uh, probably call it done. Okay, I've penciled in a couple of the birds, just to save time here. I'm going to go uh, with some uh, burnt umber, a little ultramarine blue, I'm using a round brush, this happens to be a number six by Rosemary. Uh, and it's a bit, fairly good sized brush to do with these, but it uh, also makes a sharp point. So if, you, to do, if you're going to use a brush this size, you want to make sure that, uh, that it makes a nice sharp point. And I may even go put some of the final details on with that little script brush that I had earlier. Okay. Okay, that's burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Now I'm going to take some, uh, just some straight Payne's gray. Going back to my little script brush. All right, let's go to the other one here. It's a little closer to us, so I pencil it out just a little bit larger. It's a little too dark on here. It should be more of an umber or a burnt sienna color. Here. So I'm just going to tap it with a paper towel, pull out some of the darks in here. Now we'll lay in some of these browns. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is dry now, but I'm going to go in here wet it. And then tap it. If that doesn't do it, I'll take a little more water, loosen it up again. There we go. I'm looking at my sketch here and I'm seeing that the head is too low here. So I don't have to follow my pencil. I can come up here a little farther. Put this 
way up here. I'm going to take some uh, Da Vinci uh, titanium white. Just kind of play with the values on these birds. The body's a little lighter down in this area. It's more interest to that shape too. And there's a, a marking right up here in the head and the neck area. When this dries, I may have to go back and hit those spots a little bit stronger so they stay a little whiter. But for now, let's just, just leave it there. <clears throat> I'll erase the pencils in here in a moment. So I'm going back to my bird color here. And... Uh, creating the reflection of the bird into the water. Okay, let's dry those. Make sure it's dry here. Um, I'm going to take my uh, kneaded eraser, come in here and erase my initial pencil. Again, I had the head too low for the size of the body, so I raised that up a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's just get uh, a little more interest in these birds here. This is a some raw sienna, just a touch of white with it. It's a little bit lighter right in this area right here. Little more of a point on the end of the tail there. Okay, that's close enough. Now, if I want just a subtle uh, separation from the reflection and the bird, I can use a little white paint or I can just take an X Acto knife and just scratch out a little bit. Let's just scratch out just a little bit here, just to separate the body and the... Okay, that's enough. All right, let's see what we've got here. We'll take the tape off. And that's it. A few little things I'll probably touch up a little bit, but basically uh, that gets us to where I, kind of where I, where I wanted to be with it. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.